Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do our problem number 192. Problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? This problem is very similar. This problem that we're about to do is very similar to problem number 172. These are, by the way, the problems that we had done in the past dealing with the concept of time distance, which is exactly what this is. This, this deals with the notion of time distance. 166, 167, 70, 172, 176, 181, 182, 186, 187, 91, 92, 193, 194, 98, and 99 is what we are about. We'll do after this. But these are the problems that you'll find in case you're interested in practicing problems, word problems dealing with time distance. And as I said, this one is 192 is very similar to what we did in 172. So let's take a look at it. It says, yesterday I walked 35 kilometers. I walked part of the journey at 4 kilometers per hour. I walked part of the journey at 4 kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour. KPH and the rest at 5 kilometers per hour. Part of the time, in the beginning I was walking at 4 kilometers per hour and then at some point I picked up my speed and I started going at 5 kilometers per hour. Had I walked 5 kilometers per hour when I walked at 4 kilometers per hour and vice versa, we are told that I, I would have walked 2 more kilometers in the same amount of time. Question simply is how long did I walk? In other words, I was in the beginning I was going slower for a certain amount of time at four kilometers per hour, then I picked my picked up my speed and I started going at five kilometers per hour. But then we are further told that had I done had I had I done the the speeds in the reverse order, had I gone faster in the beginning at five kilometers per hour for the amount of time that I went at four kilometers per hour actually, and then four kilometers per hour for the, the amount of time that I had originally gone at five kilometers per hour. In that scenario, we are told that I would have walked two more kilometers. The question simply is how long did I walk? I think I explained too much. Let's get going, shall we? Let's get going. Let's set it up and let's get going. So, as I said before, the problem, of course, obviously deals with the time distance problem. And the most basic concept that we need to understand here is that the distance that we travel, distance that we travel has to equal to the speed times the time. And the reason we are doing this thing right here is to introduce the variables. D we're going to use for distance, which is going to be in kilometers, and speed is going to be S. We're going to use letter S to represent the speed, which is going to be in kilometers per hour, and time we're going to represent with letter T, which is going to be in terms of hours. And as you can see, as you can see, which makes perfect sense that if you're, if you're going at three kilometers per hour, if you're going at three kilometers per hour, let's say for 10 hours, how long did I go at 3 kilometers per hour for 10 hours? I, I must have gone 30 kilometers. The speed times the time. And as you can see there, the unit of hour drops out and we end up with d equals d equals s times t. Keep in mind that s is being expressed in kilometers and t is being expressed in time. So in other words, in other words, if the problem tells you that s is equal to 7, that means we are going at 7 kilometers per hour. 7 kilometers per hour, that's the unit for s. And if t equal happens to be 3, well, that's 3 hours. Do you understand? Let's begin. Let's begin. Give me a second here. So, let's, let's, let's present this thing in a pictorial manner so that it's easier to visualize. So, total event is 35 kilometers. So, let's make a journey of 35 kilometers from here to here. Total of 35 kilometers. Part of the journey we are told, part of the journey we are told, that we went at 4 kilometers per hour in the beginning, 4 kilometers per hour. So let's call this d kilometers and here we're going to go for t1 hours, t1 hours at 4 kilometers per hour. That's the first, first leg of the journey. Well if we, have this, if, if we cover d kilometers in the first leg of the journey and the, since the total is 35 kilometers the second leg of the journey must be 35 minus d kilometers. And that part, this distance right here, let's say that we spend t2 hours, t2 hours at 5 kilometers per hour. 
let's figure out the time from here. The time here, the T1, T1 here would simply be, here's our, here's our formula, distance has to equal speed times the time, which implies the time has to be distance over the speed. Distance over the speed. The distance is d kilometers. And the speed is 4 kilometers per hour. 4 kilometers per hour. Again, you can see kilometer is going to drop out and we end up with d over 4 hours. d over 4 hours. I'm just going to write down d over 4 hours. Because, because the real estate is, is at a premium over here. Similarly, T2 here, the second, the second leg of the journey where we spend T2 number of hours, that can simply be represented as the distance which is going to be in this case 35 minus D, 35 minus D over the number of hours which over the speed which is 5 kilometers per hour. There you go. That's your first uh, first part of the journey to T1 hours which is simply D divided by 4. Second leg of the journey took T2 hours which is equal to 35 minus D over the speed that we're going which was 5 kilometers per hour. Now let's look at the reverse scenario. Now let's look at the reverse scenario on the top. We need the room. It says, had I, had I walked 5 kilometers per hour when I walked at 4 kilometers per hour, in other words, we're going to go 5 kilometers per hour for this many hours, T1 hours. And we're going to go 4 kilometers per hour for T2 hours. We're just going to do in reverse situation. So here's the here's the reverse scenario. Here's the reverse scenario. Let's see what we get out of that. So here we're going to walk t1 hours. We're going to walk t1 hours at not four kilometers per hour, but five kilometers per hour, and t2 hours at 4 kilometers per hour. Let's see how much how much distance we can cover going at t1 hours at 5 kilometers per hour. But remember t1, the reason we did all this work, the reason we did all this work is to get the t1 in terms of d here and the t2 in terms of d here, which is what we're going to use here. These are the bits of information we're going to use in the second scenario here. So t1 hours, which is d over 4, d over 4 rather, not 5, d over 4 hours times the speed, which is 5 kilometers per hour. Again, we can see, as, as you can see, the unit of hour is going to drop out. The unit of hours is going to drop out, and it gives us d times 5, which is 5d over 4 kilometers. You see, we're left with we are left with a unit of kilometers. We are left with a unit of kilometers. Now let's do the second part here. Similarly, similarly here, we are going T2 hours, but T2 is right here, 35 minus D over 5. So it's 35 minus D over 5. That's your T2 right here, the whole of that thing right here. T2 equals this quantity. That's how many hours? At 4 kilometers per hour. Oh, I did not write down the unit here. Blast it. This is hours. This is T2, which is hours times 4 kilometers per hour. Again, as you can see, the hours are going to drop out. The unit of hour is going to drop out. And we're left with kilometers. And it's going to be 4 times this quantity. 4 times 35, 35 minus d over 5. Don't forget the 5. 5. And what's the unit? Unit is kilometers. There you go. That's our equation. That's our equation. We're going to erase all of this now at the bottom because we need the room obviously. But as you can see, you have to go methodically, you have to go systematically, and you have to keep track of your thoughts. Do you understand? That's all it is. It's a puzzle. And we are solving a puzzle. It's a nice puzzle. And all the pieces of the puzzle, like a maze, have to fit together nicely. 
That's it. We are, we are done. The rest, the rest, the rest of the part is easy. The rest is downhill. We have done the difficult work. Work and what what happens? We we don't need any of this thing. I'm going to raise all of this thing. I'm going to give you one more time unobstructed view of the bottom part before I raise it. That's it. We're done. What what happens? So this distance that we travel in the reverse scenario, this distance that we travel, we are told is two kilometers more than the actual amount of distance that I travel, which was 35 kilometers we were told. The problem told us that had I done the had I done my speeds in the reverse order for the same set amount of time, the problem told us that I could have walked, I'm gonna look here, two more kilometers. But we know originally we originally we were told that we walked 35 kilometers. So this distance that we see here must be 35 plus 2. 35 kilometers that I actually did walk and two more kilometers that I could have walked had I done the speeds in, in reverse order. All we have to do is solve this equation. That's all we have to do, solve this equation for D. And once we have the D, we can figure out the time that we spend it on each leg of this journey. Let's do that. Shall we? Enough of the talk. We have a denominator of 4 here, we have a denominator of 5 here. Let's make the common denominator of 20 everywhere, shall we? So I'm going to rewrite this equation a little bit better without the units so that it's easier to deal with. So we have 5d over 4 plus 4 times 4 times 35 minus d over 5 has to equal 35 plus 2, which is 37. Now we're going to make the common denominator so that so that we can deal with that. This one has a common. This one right now has a denominator of one. This one has a denominator of four. This one has a denominator of five. Common denominator would be the least common denominator here would be twenty. Let's take this quantity multiplied by five over five. Like this, this quantity multiplied by four over four, and let's just make this one twenty over twenty. There we go. Now we we have begin. We are ready to begin our journey. Five times five is twenty-five. 25d, I hope I'm not going at too much of a leisurely pace, 35d plus, okay this is tricky here because here we have a 4 and here we have a 4, so it's 16 times 35, 16 times 35 minus, again you have to keep track of your things here, minus, again 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 4 is 16d. And then over 20, which appears everywhere. This one has an over 20, that one has an over 20, and this quantity, 37 times 20, is has a denominator 20. Since they have the same denominator, we can ignore the denominator. Ignore, the denominator now ceases to play any role. The denominator now ceases to have any significance. Because everybody's got one. Everybody's got the same damn thing. So nobody has the right to brag, look at me, I have a denominator of 20. Well, everybody else was there, so do I. Shut up. Do you understand? They all have the same denominator. It plays no. It play, it has no significance. It plays no role. We can ignore it. We can ignore it. That was the whole point. Twenty-five d minus sixteen d would give us nine d. The nine d would have to equal thirty-seven times twenty. Thirty-seven times two is fourteen. Carry one six plus seven seven forty. Seven forty minus this quantity. Thirty-five minus sixteen. 35 minus 16. I don't recall doing this much. Maybe I did. Who knows? And how much is 35 minus 16? Let's do it out here on the side. 35 minus uh, 35 times 16 rather. 35 times 16. Let's do it here. 35 times 16. 16 fives are 80. 0 carry 8. 16 threes. 16 threes are 48. 48 plus 10 would have been 58. 58. Therefore, it will be 56. One more time, 16, 16 times 5, we are, not, we are not going to multiply one digit at a time like a baby, we are just going to do 16 together, 16 times 5 is 80, 0, carry 8, 16 times 3 is 48, I believe, 16 plus 16 is 32, and 32 plus 6 would be 38, and another 10 would be 48, 48 plus 10 would have been 58, we are not adding 10, we are adding 8, so it is 56, 560. Uh, essentially, we are bringing we are bringing the 16 times 35 on the other side. Okay, let's write this equation nicely a little bit. There, and I'm going to raise this part here, and I'm going to highlight the equation that we are working with. This is our equation that we are working with right now. This is the equation we have to solve for d, and we are almost done. 
seven, 76 minus 56 would have been 20. 76 minus 56 would have been 20. So it's going to be 18 because it's 74 instead of 76. 18, which is 180. Oh, this is very easy. Multiply the whole equation by 9. Multiply everything by 9 here. And if we do that, the 9 is going to drop out. And it turns out that D is equals to 180 over 9, which is 20 kilometers. Which is 20 kilometers. We're not quite done yet because the question was not the question was not how long, how, the question was not what was the total amount of distance I walked. The question actually was how long, how long I walked. The question I was asking is how long did I walk, not how far did I walk. So we have to do one extra step. Let's do it on the top, shall we? Let's do it on the top. I need the room again. So again, draw your picture. Makes, makes it easy to look at it. Makes it easy, makes it easy to deal with it if you have a, something to look at. Because you have to keep in mind what D represents. D does not represent the total distance that we walked. D only represented, D was this distance, the first segment, which we just found out is 20 kilometers. And since we walked 35 kilometers, this distance must be 35 minus 20, or 15 kilometers. In the first part of the journey, we did it at 4 kilometers per hour. In the second part of the journey, we did 5 kilometers per hour. That was, that, was, that was what happened actually. In actuality, in actuality, we were going slower in the beginning and then we picked up the speed later on in the journey. And the reverse scenario, of course, was the reverse scenario. So let's find out here. Let's, let's, let's find out. If you're going 20 kilometers at 4 kilometers per hour, in order to cover 20 kilometers at 4 kilometers per hour, it would take you 5 hours. It would take you 5 hours. And here, we are going 15 kilometers at 5 kilometers per hour. At 5 kilometers per hour, 15 kilometers will take you 3 hours. That's what it was. It's not a big deal. The question was how long I walked, and the answer is I walked a total of 8 hours. Total of 8 hours. That's it, we're done. As far as the problem is concerned, we are done. What we're going to do now, as we always do, which is to take a few more seconds and make sure that our answer is correct. We're going to take a few more seconds to verify our answer. Make sure it makes sense with the Second bit, second bit of the story, the second half of the story, the reverse scenario. Let's do, let's do reverse scenario on the bottom. In the reverse scenario, in the reverse scenario, we're going to go d kilometers, which is 20 kilometers, and here is this 35 minus d, 35 minus d, which is 15 kilometers, but the speeds are going to reverse. The speeds are going to reverse. We're going to go for five hours here. The speed of not. The speeds are going to reverse. We're going to go five kilometers per hour here, and here we're going to go four kilometers per hour. You see? I'm going to show you here with the with the, with the red ink there, so that you can see how the speeds are reversed. We are going four kilometers per hour for the second part of the journey, and we are going five kilometers per hour for the first part of the journey. But the amount of time is still the same. Whatever, amount of, whatever the amount of time that we spent in the original uh, part, original story, we're spending the same amount of time at this new speed. Five hours. Right here, five hours. And here it was three hours. So it's here it's going to be three hours. And that's how we verify it. If you're going five hours at five kilometers per hour, that implies that you would, go, you, you would have gone 25 kilometers. Actually, this picture is no longer correct because uh, this, the first part of the segment, since, the, since, since it is the time that is fixed, it says, had I gone, uh, had I gone, at a, had I gone at a slower speed for the same amount of time that I go to, that I went at a faster speed, and vice versa, I would have covered two more kilometers. Which means the distance that we're going to cover. I just realized that my picture is not right. Of course, it's going to be longer because we, we are spending the same amount of time that we did before. Same amount of time. But at a faster speed, if you're sp spending the same amount of time at a faster speed, of course you're not going to travel d kilometers. This, this picture is wrong. This pic I shouldn't have drawn this picture. This picture is incorrect. This picture is incorrect. It's the hours that you're looking at. Five hours. I should have put here five hours. First segment of the journey, right here, five hours. And the second segment of the journey, three hours, is what I should have done. This distance was the unknown quantity, which we just found out is 25 kilometers. And here, 4 kilometers per hour for 3 hours implies that you would go 12 kilometers per hour. 25 plus 12 is 37 kilometers 
which is indeed which is indeed two more kilometers more two more kilometers more than we actually walked which means that our answer must have been correct thank you